Yeah. All right. Judge, learn how to report All right. So now we're going to cover chapter 18, postpartum complications. If you look at your real, if you look at your real child, 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 look at your real child. What's the variable? What's the variable mean? Variable means it goes. What 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 it's causes what? Line, what goes. causes a variable? Look at your real child. Deceleration. Look at it. What what is the cause of it? Oh, the oxygen or movement. Or compression. Okay. So when the cord gets compressed, you get a variable. Okay. All right. Acceleration will have anything to do with that right away. Right? That was something that you I, I know variable early and late is the deceleration. Those are D cells and the acceleration is a variable. We have one more chapter left. Perfect. Ready. I just didn't know what you're doing. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do we have to move? I don't. I don't know. We're gonna talk to Jenny. Okay. I'm just check it. Finish. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. So complications. All right. The most common postpartum complications are hemorrhage, thromboembolytic disorders, subinvolution of the uterus, infection, and depression. Okay. Postpartum hemorrhage can can occur early or late. It, the early occurs within the first 24 hours, and that's because of uterine acne, so her fundus is, her uterus is not contracting, it's not firm, or any kind of laceration. So if mom had, you know, um, maybe she got forceps, like a forceps to assist the delivery, and, you know, she had some, like, tearing in there, and they didn't see it right away. She could be bleeding that way. Or, you know, maybe she had, you know, some kind of traumatic, you know, delivery, and there's some kind of oozing, you know, blood that's nobody's picking up. <coughs> Late postpartum hemorrhage occurs between 24 and six weeks, 24 hours and six weeks. So it's after the fact. And it can be some involution, so the uterus is not returning to normal pre-pregnancy state or retained placental fragments. So it's some, something was left behind. So that's why it's very important that you're in delivery room, the placenta comes out, it goes in the basin, Look at it. Make sure it's intact. It's not a dirty well, one side's dirty, Duncan, and the other one's not. Oh, one side. Oh, one side. Always, always. always. Oh. There's two sides to the placenta. I didn't know they. The shiny one is, is it? The shiny, the shiny one goes one. goes to the baby. The baby's baby side. The the dirty Duncan side with the cotyledons in it. Yes, the so look, it's that goes to mommy's side. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense though because it's coming off of right. We, I, 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 oh, I, 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 I took it was the I thought it was either oh, one, one or yeah. other. No. No. Dirty yeah. one stays with mama. Mm -hmm. That's mommy side. That's how you can tell like, what side of the placenta you're looking at. Side is with the uh, oh, so if you okay. saw it and the placenta was coming and you saw the back of it, that means that, 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 that was detached. Well, it's detached anyway. Yeah. As, as the placenta is coming out, the mom's in sterile, okay? So the placenta is coming out and you're gonna see some portion of it. And most likely it's gonna be the shiny side of it because it's coming out that way. But when you plop it in the bucket, the, the, the dirty Duncan side is off at you, okay? And that, that just means that that side was the side that was attached to mom, that was on mom's side. The baby side is the shiny side. So when they say, oh, we have to culture the placenta, we need maternal side and fetal side. You know what side you're doing. All right. So management of hypovolemic shock. So you need to recognize what's causing it. Like what's it what's coming what's it coming from? You need to stop the blood loss, start IV fluids, monitor her vital signs, give her oxygen, and insert a fully catheter. Okay? So with the IVs, if you have someone who is going into shock or she's having like severe hemorrhage, you're not just giving, you don't have that one little IV, you're doing two IVs. You want access to this, this woman. Um, vital signs, very frequently. Um, and for catheter, you want to you want to watch her eyes and nose. You know, if she's going into shock, you need to know what, what's going in and what's coming out, okay? 
the uterine acne and the causes. So it's the inability of the myometrial muscle to contract and stay contracted around the open blood vessels, okay? So that's what we're controlling. So where the placenta was, you have these open vessels. The uterus contracts, closes off those vessels, and she doesn't bleed so much. Make sense? Mm -hmm. If you're not contracting, those vessels are open and she will bleed, okay? Mechanical factors include the retained placenta, large blood clots. So maybe mom, you know, um, she just had this collection of blood in there, it clotted up and it, it caused like a little block. So she has this blood clot in there and, and all that blood's filling up in her uterus and collecting and not coming out. Or um, she has extreme uterine distension. So she had triplets, quads, quints, whatever. And her uterus was stretched beyond, you know, its capacity. Or a full bladder. She didn't get up to pee. So guess what? That bladder's gonna act like a balloon and it's not gonna allow the uterus to contract it. Um, metabolic factors is muscle exhaustion, okay? So, you know, mom comes in for an induction and you're giving her oxytocin, pitocin, pit, 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 all day, all day, contraction, contraction. You know, her uterus is going crazy with contractions. Well, just like you, you're lifting weights all day. What's gonna happen to your arms at the end of the day? You're gonna feel like moving them? No. You're gonna feel like contracting your muscles anymore? Exactly, that's what happens to the uterus. Okay, it's higher, it's a muscle. And hypokalemia is also, um, calcemia is a, is a cause. Drugs, mag sulfate. So mag sulfate is a drug that we give to moms who are preeclamptic, okay? And that relaxes everything. So if we're giving you something to relax everything, you relax your muscles, your uterus is relaxed too, okay? So is that from, is that from, so you build up, what's that because of? The preeclampsia yes. is that we're going to cover that, but um, it's a, a whole little ball of its own okay. with you know blood pressure and right. labs and you know we're, we'll, we'll cover that. Um, calcium channel blockers also cause uh, uterine acne. It's another drug. Trauma and laceration, vaginal, cervical, and perineal laceration. You can most definitely have a cervical laceration with the, um, with the delivery. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're good if you get a test oh, okay. at 1.30. Oh, okay. So they don't need this. We'll probably be, be done by then. Yeah, we'll be okay. Um, or sus um, suspect when excessive bleeding occurs and the uterus is firm. So you're feeling her fundus is rock hard, but she's still bleeding. So what's going on? Why is she bleeding so much? Maybe her lo like the lower uterine segment, the lower part, is not firming up and she's bleeding. Or maybe she has, you know, a tear that they didn't pick up and, you know, she's bleeding. Um, vaginal bleeding is typically bright red. That is, you know, Loki is supposed to be dark red, not profuse or continuous. So when you're checking someone post-delivery and you press on their fundus, okay, you get a little bit of blood that comes out, that's great, it should be a little bit on the dark side. You get bright red bleeding, Just first bleeding. that's not good, not good. That first bleeding. Well, you, it, you, it just, you're having too much, like it's too much bleeding. Your, your blood should be dark red. Right. Just like, just like your menstrual stuff. Okay. Monitor for signs of shock. Retain placenta prevents the uterus from contracting effectively. So we give them um, oxytocin to expel the fragments. So you can do oxytocin. You can do, you know, um, some cytotec. You can do, you know, maybe a little methogen to help contract the uterus, stuff like that. They may have to go for a DNA to go remove that placenta. So they may have to go back into the OR and get set up in stirrups and they go in and kind of is they'll, scraping? They'll is kind scraping? of scrape around, they'll ultrasound to see like where that they can find where it is, and then they'll go in and, and try to kind of get that piece out. Um, or a placenta accreta, uh, that, that can occur because of um, results in perfuse bleeding and may require hysterectomy and we'll cover placenta accreta. So that's basically when your placenta is embedded into the uterus. Because it's not, it's not, your vessels are like this. So this is placenta and then this is, you know, like you. So they're like this. And the blood flows through the vessels, they get the blood and oxygen, they get all their nutrients, but nothing's ever like attached. 
Try to give them, you know, give them time to deliver it on their own. But if their bleeding is very profuse, or you know, time has passed and they haven't, they'll sometimes go in and do a DNA. So an accreta is when it's actually like into the muscle, into the. Muscle. So this, you have a placenta accreta, a placenta increta, and a placenta percreta. So the placenta has adhered to the uterine wall. It's abnormal and it's a deep attachment. Okay, so you can have the placenta attach it, like attached to the uterine wall, come out of the uterine wall, and attach to whatever other area is around your pelvis. Okay, we had this one woman; she had a, a placenta percreta, so it was out of the uterus. She ended up with a hysterectomy. She was in the OR for like six hours. And when you looked at the, um, the the uterus in the basin, it looked like it was um, like when you you know how like a tree has all the roots on the bottom and they're all spread out like this. That's what the surface of her placenta looked like. It was all this stuff like, coming out. And you, when you were looking at it, you're like, what is that? And that was all the everything was coming out. Yeah, it was all the way in. There was no way you were gonna get that placenta to detach. So they had to take her uterus out. Major complication. Major complication. Um, a hematoma it may result um, from an injury to blood vessels in the perineum or the vagina. Um, if it's in soft tissue, it, you'll typically see it like bulge, and there's like a bluish, bluish mass. Um, it can hold up to 250 to 500 mLs of blood, so it can hold quite a bit, and it's very painful, very painful, and um, they might not be able to avoid or to defecate, and they're gonna have to go in and evacuate that out, they have to get it out. Yeah. Um, late postpartum hemorrhage, um, it's typically the result of sudden pollution, so we're not returning back to our pre-pregnant state. Mm -hmm. um, it could be caused by a vascular area, retained placenta, there it is again, um, infection, um, fundus may appear higher than expected, and she may have persistent um, lochia rubra, like red bleeding. Um, an infection can also uh, manifest if uh, you smell anything foul. So some evolution of the uterus um, occurs when it fails to return back to its size. Um, again, those darn little placental fragments, uh, mild endometritis, and excessive vigorous massage. Why wouldn't the placenta come off? Yeah, it just it embedded itself in there. Like, would it fuse together or something? Not fused, but it's kind of like um, like, the, like the roots, like of a tree. Oh, so it just kind of grows in there and it, it, it just gets in there deep and you just can't get it out. They can sometimes see it on ultrasound and say, you know, you have, you know, there's a uh, potential for you to have like an accreta. Um, oh, wow. They might have to do like an MRI to really like get a good so look at it. Like Not necessarily. They, you know, you go for a scan and, and you know, like maternal fetal medicine will, will, will see something and they're like, you know, what is that? And, and they'll send you for like a consult or a follow up. That's the thing you're having a baby at home. Gonna Think something's going to happen. You and never know. Happens. Your body is not your own. Once you conceive, you have lost control, okay? <laughs> that is it, you're done. Um, okay, disseminated intravascular coagulation it is a clonic and anticoagulation stimulation that occurs at the same time. So you're clotting and breaking down your clots at the same time. You release um, this thromboplastin and it uses up all your available fibrinogen and platelets. Results in profuse bleeding and intravascular clotting. And often second, it's caused by um, secondary issues like uh, placental abruption. You guys know what that is? When it detaches, when the placenta detaches from the uterus. Wow, like the body pregnant. Uh, gestational hypertension. 
a missed abortion, or a fetal demise. Now this, when this happens, it is not good, okay? You're bleeding out, basically. So you're gonna ooze from your IV site. You're gonna ooze from your epidural site. You're just gonna continuously bleed, and no matter what they're doing, like every time the needle goes in, you just start bleeding. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna bleed. So we've had um, cases like this where we were putting in blood and it was just coming right back out. Mm -hmm. Like she's just bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. So, yes. mm -hmm. so most of the time in the cases when this occurs, the patient um, will end up in the ICU for recover, like to recover because they just lost so much volume. Yeah. Um, one of the docs actually drew a tube of blood and sat it down. You know when you draw a tube of blood, it's supposed to clot after a while, like a regular tube. It never clotted. It was like water. Signs of DIC, like I said, you're oozing from your sites. You have petechiae, ecchymosis, oliguria. You're, you're not putting anything out. There's yeah. nothing to put out. Um, restlessness, um, and then in pregnancy and early postpartum, shock is considered a late sign of DIC. Yeah. Now, what you say, what would happen if the, um, the placenta is like you know, later now, we just report to the baby doesn't die, right? They can, sure. Absolutely. You need to be delivered ASAP. That, that's, an, that's an emergency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is an emergency. Okay, so say so you at home. Better call 911 and get. But can you problem. tell that? It, usually, if you have, if like, if the, it's suspected that you had an abruption, is um, you can have, you may have bleeding. You may not always have bleeding if, if it's concealed. Um, like it, what I mean when it's concealed is the outer, at the outer edges of the placenta are attached, but the middle has pulled away, so you're collecting blood behind the placenta. Oh. Um, or if it's attached from like the side, you're gonna have you know bleeding. You're gonna have a very rigid abdomen. It's gonna be very tender, very painful. Yes, and that kid needs to get out quick. I mean, the baby could die. You, you could bleed out. You could die. You know, so it's not a joke. You don't that change. I mean, yeah. If, if she's not. You know, if it's not caught on time, it's just going to dwindle, 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 and then you go. You won't have any. All right, so help syndrome. This is where that max sulfate um, will come into play um, also. So help syndrome is high blood pressure, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelets. This is one sick woman. But she has okay. be She will be on that. Yes. We give magnesium sulfate for neuroprotection. We don't want her to seize, okay? Um, von Willebrand's disease, it's an inherited disorder. Um, it can cause a decrease in plasma factor E, which is for I use say what's the hemo hemophilia. Hemophilia? Yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's, you need the factor eight for you to be able to do that, for your platelets to work, right? Um, so bruising, nosebleeds, heavy periods, um, and you might not really pick it up during pregnancy. So a very good history, like you wanna make sure, like if you're doing your history, if the patient tells you ahead of time, um, I have this, or you know, this runs in my family. Hemorrhage from this disease is treated with um, cryoprecipitate um, to raise factory vessels in the blood, levels in the blood. Prevention of hemorrhage, uh, prophylactic administration of, say, oxytocin right after delivery. So they'll ask you, how come I'm still getting um, pitocin after delivery? Like, why am I doing that? We're giving you that to contract your uterus so you don't bleed a lot, you know? That's why we're doing it. Or if, you know, they're giving her oxytocin and it hasn't worked, they'll do um, methogen. They can do hemabate. They can do um, cytotec rectally, you know, to try to get that uterus to contract. Early clamping of the cord and assisted delivery of the placenta. So you don't want to sit there and, and just let <coughs> everything linger. Clamp the cord, cut the cord, and the body, you know, within a few minutes or so, should deliver the placenta. Massage the, the uterine, like the fundus. So sometimes that'll kind of help keep things nice and firm. 
Uh, and then just watch her. You know, did she empty her bladder before she got her epidural and she's been sitting here for hours? Did she empty her bladder before, did you straight have her before delivery? Or, you know, if she's a C-section, is her fully draining properly? Like, we want to make sure that her bladder is empty. Do they, would they always give oxytocin or just in some cases? They always give it. The only afterwards. Afterwards, yep. They always give it. Um, very rarely do you ever have someone who comes in and they want to go natural and they don't have an IV and they don't want the oxytocin or the breastfeed. But um, you're not going to have the same amount flowing through you as you would if, if we gave it to you. I mean, it'll work, you'll cramp, you know, whatever, but you may have some heavy bleeding. What, so. what intervention would you do if, what would, what would a doctor or somebody do this kind of thing? Leaving behind the placenta, you mean? No, the uterus. Well, your uterus is, is like the house. So where where was the bleeding from? Well, I hate talking about those words, but when I was pregnant, I was ble I was having I hemorrhaged for four months behind. They said I was it was behind my uterus, and there was nothing they could do about it. I was either going to have spontaneous abortion, or it would stop, or I, I would just hemorrhage the whole pregnancy, and they did nothing. And they heard it like hell. What I think months. they meant is that you were bleeding behind your placenta, like between the placenta and the uterus. Mm -hmm. That's so why I don't do anything. It depends on how early you are. I was, early, I was six weeks. That's why. Because 24 weeks is viable, is considered viability. So anything under 24 weeks, there's really not much they can do. And some places will say, okay, we can try to resuscitate the baby at 23 weeks. But that, it's all depending on that place, but the, the usual is 24 weeks. So anything under the net, like you could be 22 weeks and there's not much they can do. Yeah. And you have to wait to see what happens. You know, if the, if the pregnancy, you know, terminates. And you need to stop in four months, but that's a long time. Yeah. And pain. Yeah. Well, it hurts. Yeah. So you're, you're, like, you're, you're filling up that spot with blood. So that, that's going to be painful, <coughs> absolutely. No, you need to something. Just for like moms, like you know, complaints, like you know, this is what's happening. This is what I'm seeing. You know. No, when I found out I was pregnant, I was yeah six weeks and like six days, and I was coming out like my stomach it hurts really really bad, and I was still going to Children's Hospital at this point, and she was like, it shouldn't be pain, right? Because you're pregnant, it shouldn't be pain, right? And I went to the ER and I was going to go. That's the. So um, assessment and management of postpartum hemorrhage, so you're monitoring vital signs, you're monitoring eyes and nose, again, what goes in, what comes out, and their level of consciousness. Are they still awake, alert, and oriented? Are they talking to you? Or are they in and out of consciousness? You have to actually, like, hey, wake up, like, you know, talk to them. Weigh the carry pads. Um, are they saturating these pads? How much do they weigh? Like, how much are they losing? Massage the fundus and sulfur, and then medications may be required. Thrombophlebitis and thromboembolism. Thrombophlebitis is an inflammation of the inner blood vessel wall with a clot attached to it. All right? When the clot turns away from the vessel wall and it moves into the circulation, it's called a thrombus. If it ends up in the lung, it's a pulmonary embolus. Okay? It's a common postpartum complication. So you want to watch her um, signs of pain and, and palpate her cast, um, and then see how it is. Check your moment sign. Now you know why we check moment sign. Mm -hmm. um, it may be indicative of uh, deep vein thrombosis in the absence of moment sign. Um, compare your pulses in your lower extremities. You know, do you feel one more than another? Is one leg more swollen than the other? If pain extends above the knee, you know, what's going on with that? Superficial venous thrombus, um, rest. She's gonna need her um, anti-embolism socket, so her TEDs, um, pain uh, meds for comfort, um, maybe some heat, elevate the leg, and get her out of bed. Walk around, so important, I've, I've said it numerous times, get them out of bed, we need to walk around. DVT um, will need some anticoagulation therapy and monitoring um, her coags, her PT, her PTT, and her INR. That's a picture of 
Assessment and management. Um, here's your Rita again. Remember? Redness, edema, ectomosis, discharge, and approximation. So you're checking out their, their bottoms. Okay? All right. Necrotizing fasciitis is a serious complication. Loose discoloration or numbness around the wound edges and aggressive treatment is essential. Okay? Um, patients with chorionitis and endometritis are at risk for septic shock. No joke. Urinary tract infection and pyelonephritis, it can occur after birth from um, hypotonia of the bladder. Urinary stasis, so you know, she just tells me not being her bladder. Birth trauma, catheterization, maybe, you know, they had you know, a little bit of a traumatic um, incident when they got straight cast, frequent vaginal exams or epidural anesthesia. Symptoms include dys dysuria, frequency, urgency, and a low-grade fever. Pyelonephritis, the, like the above symptoms, plus the costovertebral angle tenderness, so in this area, back here. Okay. Chills, fever, malaise, hematuria, nausea, and vomiting. So make sure mom is able to empty her bladder, make sure she feels like she emptied her bladder, and if she doesn't, scan her bladder and see what she's got going on in there. Mastitis usually occurs around two to three weeks after birth. Um, it's painful and tender, localized hard mass that is red. I'll show you a picture. Fever, chills, and malaise. Um, it ca it's called because milk is at a standstill. It's not moving anywhere. It's just sitting in there. Mm -hmm. There's some nipple trauma or poor breastfeeding technique. So again, if your kid's not latching properly, you break that seal, put them back onto the breast, and teach them to latch properly. Or inadequate hand washing. They said you keep breastfeeding though. You do. So that, so that breast so over there. Keep breastfeeding your mind like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how you get it. Yeah, that's how they get it to come out. No. Can't it's it's water yeah. You gotta fight through it. You have to. I ain't got to do nothing. You can't do the milk. The <laughs> yeah. breast feet part didn't hurt. It was just like a pain right here. So, well, so, it's a pain here. I you're, gonna get, you're gonna get antibiotics. Um, and in a lot of cases, again, continue to breastfeed from both breasts. Ice or warm packs. Um, moist heat promotes comfort and increases circulation. Now you gotta be mindful of the ice packs because if you are going to continue to breastfeed and you're icing your breast, you're gonna have a drop in your milk production over there. So you can do it like a couple minutes just to kind of get it over the hump so you feel a little bit better, but just be mindful of how long you leave ice packs on, on your breast if you're doing that. Postpartum blues, um, we touched on this a little bit, you know, a little while ago. So it rarely lasts more than two weeks. Um, and a lot of women just complain that they, oh, they're feeling overwhelmed, they can't really cope, maybe they're oversensitive, and they cry a lot. It's like, you, you know, you walk in, why are you crying? I don't know, I'm crying. <laughs> that, was okay. Okay. that just happens. <laughs> that so just happens. So they need, to, they need rest. They need some guidance. You need to empathize with these women, reassure them, and support them and help them in any way you can. All right? Postpartum depression is general signs of depression such as weight loss, sleeplessness, and ambivalence. Just don't feel anything. <laughs> Women at risk are unstable or abusive, uh, have an abusive family environment. They have a history of previous depressive episodes, history of limited support system, low self-esteem, or dissatisfaction with education, economics, or their partner. Postpartum, is that like second guessing yourself? Just kind of like, I know, I'm not good enough for this. I can't do this. And you just, that negative, that just keeps going. It just spirals into like a big ball. They feel like they can't like get out of it. What do you want to do from there? Postpartum psychosis is similar to other psychoses. Early signs of depression, um, or they may start abruptly within three weeks following birth. They have, they're confused. 
they're restless, they're anxious, they have suicidal thoughts. Delusional thoughts may be expressed like you said about putting the baby in the snow. I said the delusional thoughts may be expressed. Oh yeah. Like your friend said about putting the baby in the snow. And what about the woman that got married when he put a baby in the snow? She's crazy. It's like psychotic. She had just had the baby. The baby was two months old. The husband came home and found the baby wrapped up next to the mom with the baby was cold. The mom said she put the baby in the microwave. It was all in the news. In the microwave, the baby weighed 14 pounds. Safety of a woman and her newborn are at risk. Psych psychiatric interventions are needed, including medication. Women need help. Very strong. Okay. So those are the postpartum complications. Do we have any questions? <coughs> How many questions can we get to test? Fifty. Okay. <laughs> uh, everything that's like gold is near power. Focus. Not necessarily. Read it all. Are we going to give us a study guide? I will, yes. Yeah, we'll get a study guide. Um, I will try to have it to Christine um, by the end of this week. And then um, this way you can work on stuff as far as like, you know, what to read and what to focus on those for your test. And then your test is November 4th. So how are your tests? I don't know, you'll have to look back. You'll have to take your seat. There's only one. That's the scary part. We don't even know how to do that. So, you know, mom could have been pregnant and, you know, she was so early and didn't even realize that it was uh, like a missed abortion, spontaneous abortion. I was so early. As I was reading about it, I had to kill it. I knew what was going to be next because we would have been so early. You would really have. You see, like maybe some clots. Oh, heavy breathing, okay. Like this one's here, your flow's a little bit heavy, and you just didn't pick up on it. That you wouldn't know. So if you're already negative, you know that's an issue. Or with um, with other complications, like if she didn't know, she's just bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. Yeah. So, any questions? Any more questions? You you should be a teacher. Oh, thank you. I am. That's a really good <laughs> way of giving information. All right, so we are done with the video. I hope this helps if you guys.